Women's History Month, we've been talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment. And this morning, we are focusing on... Every Friday during Women's History Month... All month long, we've been celebrating Women's History Month by talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment... We are in a state of 
of emergency. Wrote the song about it? Like the hit? Here it go. Freedom
and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Tariq Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for a change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Edmund is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios and we approve of this message. Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for, a change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. The Mississippi campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Create an, an economy. Create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're fact, you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign.
What's up, Ebony 433? I wanted him to assume that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Snup no. What was the question again? I didn't hear it. Y'all made me get up and down. Y'all made me goddamn go old school to the ring. Uh, I'm down. Let's you still didn't answer the question, sir. No, we didn't. He still didn't answer the question. You still, you still didn't answer the question, sir. Where it goes, nobody knows. It's nothing to not allow a child to grow up. Some people bore their children. They won't let them grow up. They keep, no matter how old they get, they keep letting them. They want to do things for the child. Let your child grow up. Let these black people grow up. Ride, ride, ride. 
Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started quickly. Let's get this party started quickly. Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started quickly. Let's get this party started quickly. Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started quickly. The log book. Yeah, Kendrick, you were to talk serious over to you. Colonel Jackson, did you want to Colonel Kendrick can't go to the code like that because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Oh, Jack, when it went bad, you cut these guys loose. Your Honor, you have more inside the money trade. Your Honor, you doctored the log book. Spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. 
I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand at post. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. As always, in the name of our ancestors, peace forever. And always, and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth. Woo! Okay. Let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly, right? I'm trying to wake myself up here. I am a, a little bit tired. I wanted to talk about this subject a few days ago, but I was just too tired, too fatigued. As many of you know, I believe this is day number nine I have been on a exercise program and it's been wearing me out. It's been making me tired, but I feel much better. I'm getting my stamina back. I feel, I feel alive. I feel much better. I'm pretty sure that as time goes on, the fatigue will subside. And I wasn't as sore as I thought I was going to be. I have been doing from the very beginning, at minimum, an hour on my stationary bike and these other little exercises, some crunches, and I lift the weights and things. So, uh, and I'm adding every day that I do it, I add to the repetition. And I just feel feeling like the most powerful voice on YouTube. <laughs> yes. I want to thank, of course, Mellow Cap 
for the encouragement and the inspiration, motivation, keeping me going, and the deacons of reality, those who are regulars on this platform. Uh, shout out to Denzel Rogers and Brother Khalil, Talib, Tafari Smith, uh, Z-Mad, Razzy Fry, Phil Fox, and Sister Ann Smalltalk. I think that's the main group. Yeah, so I thank you so much for your support. I thank you so much. Oh, Angela Hines. Shout out to Angela Hines. I thank you all so much for your support. And uh, it's your motivation, your inspiration, it's your support that wants me to be alive, to continue this fight. Oh, Armin, oh, how could I forget Armin Delight? Yes, Armin Delight. Shout out to Armin Delight. Um, it is because of you I feel so great. You give me a reason to be alive. You give me a reason to continue this push for reality as there needs to be someone to push reality. You have all these others, 24 hours a day, promoting fantasy and fiction and lies and deception. There should be a real voice that can represent reality, natural life. You don't have to believe in nothing. You don't have to theorize. It is what it is and we accept life for what it is. We're not looking for a future on planet X in other realms and dimensions. How are you going to talk about planet X and different dimensions and you don't even know how to operate on the physical that you know? It makes no sense to me. But there are those who live in these worlds. And we will see how far this gets us living in fantasy because that's what it is. I thank you so much for joining us this evening. It is always an honor to come before you and speak to my friends. I don't want to hold you long. I'm going to talk to, to you in the best manner that I can. And we're not trying, and I do not wish nobody to think that I want to join the parade of fear, using fear to get people to do this, fear to get people to do, to do that. But unfortunately, there are some realities that we're going to have to deal with, whether we like it or not. Some of us fear death. Whether you like it or not, whether you are afraid or not, you're going to have to deal with it. Some of us have to deal with being evicted out of our house because we can't pay the rent. Whether you like it or not, I'm scared I'm going to get evicted. It doesn't matter. That's the reality of what you have to face. It's better to just deal with the reality than go to the liquor store, go to the weed man, go to the Bible and Quran. Oh, Jesus, so oh, help me. I'm wondering about the God of Ukraine. I'm very sure the people of Ukraine believe in God. I'm very sure the people in Russia believe in God. It's messed up. Whose side is God on? When you talk about God, God is only on the side of the winner. How can you tell if God made you a winner? 
and you just didn't become a winner because you just simply fought a better fight. The whole concept here, it doesn't make any sense to me. Did you know there are over 7,000 gods? Of course, we always talk about Jesus and Muhammad, Allah, Yahshua, Yahweh, whatever. But there are over 7,000 gods that these people believe in. Which one? Which one is the real thing, baby? Which one is the real thing? I would rather leave it all alone. I don't want to be part of all that confusion. And on top of that, there's no proof, there's no evidence that none of these 7,000 gods have done anything for anybody. But what they said, boys will be boys. Those who believe, they're going to just believe no matter what happened to them, no matter how many bombs drop on their head, no matter how many bullets from gang members they got to dodge trying to go to work, they're going to just believe in that stuff. Been doing it for thousands of years. It makes no sense to us. And we've been here for a long time. We've just been here in the minority. And in ancient times, they would kill people like us. How dare? How dare you say that there's no God? They will make mockery of you like they do us. They will ostracize you like they do us. And back in the day, and I heard in some countries, they would outright kill people that talk like me. How dare you talk about my God? Let your God kill me. If your God is real, let your God kill me. Why you got to pick up a gun? Why you got to pick up a knife and a stick and a rock to kill me? If your God is real, let your God kill me. That's because deep down, deep down inside, these people know it ain't real. That's why they pick up a gun. That's why they pick up a knife. That's why they put locks on their doors. Because they know that God don't exist. They know that God can't protect them. God didn't teach us to be stupid. That's your excuse. That's your excuse for your God not doing anything for you because your God never does nothing. Never. So if you don't pick up a gun or a knife or do something for yourself, it won't get done. That's just reality. Let me see if I can get through this subject and call it a night. <clears throat> the clip that we just saw, Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, two famous actors in a movie from A, a Few Good Men, I believe. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. It is important for us to keep it real. It is important for us to tell the truth to the best of our ability. To the best of our ability. Tell the truth. Keep it real. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us in the Nation of Islam Tell the truth, no matter the consequences, tell the truth. I would rather my sister Terry Ellis, I would rather her to tell me, get the hell out of my face. You ain't on my level. I would rather, I would rather her tell me that. Of course it would hurt. <sighs> Excuse me. You didn't say that, Terry, did you? 
I would rather hear those words than you lead me on with falsehood, lead me on with a lie. Your feelings are hurt, but in the long run, when you stand on your truth, when you stand on what's real, you be much better off. And you may not know, I might not know. She might be doing me a favor. Of course, you lie de die, you so in love and you like somebody. You're not tripping. But they might be doing you a favor. Everything that look good, sound good, don't mean that it's good. Some of us, we have learned that in our life, haven't we? <laughs> it look good sound good why do you think the divorce rate is so high because in the beginning it look good sound good feel good and so all over America it begins with feeling good but then they are in the houses of the legal system getting divorces. I thought it felt good. I thought it looked good. I thought it sound good. Why are you are in the in the courthouse getting a divorce? All that pleasure, all that romance and love. Now you hate the other person worse than you love them at one time. Explain that to me. We so in a rush, so in a hurry, and we do things for the wrong reasons, and then we get caught up. Even when we take up, take our time, it still can blow up in our face, but at least when you take your time, you might have an opportunity, you might have a chance to avoid some things when you take it a little bit slow. Take it easy. Tell the truth, no matter the consequences. Last year, you know, we had a, a problem. And the only reason why we was able to get over that hump because I stood on the truth to the best of my ability. And that's why we were victorious. And that's why we rise. That's why we are the most powerful voice on YouTube because we stand on the truth. We stand on reality to the best of our ability, no matter the consequences. I don't care how much you make mockery of me. I don't care how much you laugh and giggle and snivel. I don't care nothing about all that. I don't care how mighty you think you are. They threw everything at us, flagged the channel, gossip and slander. Still standing strong, still the mighty one. Your best bet was to leave us alone, but you're dealing with these arrogant people. And they want to try you. Well, try. What did it get you? The only thing you did was make us stronger. Hulk smash. That's the only thing that you did. How do you know you have the truth, Negro? When you take the information, when you take the opinion, when you take the ideology, when you take the research, the information and the research, it must pass the criteria of logic. It must pass the criteria, criteria of reason and being analytical and common sense. 
And if it can do that, if it can pass through that criteria, if it can qualify to pass through that criteria, then you have the truth to the best of your ability. And that's better than anything these folks have. I guarantee. Deacon said, truth is our weapon of choice. Reality is truth. They go hand in hand. Truth, facts, reality, they all go hand in hand. You don't need to believe in nothing if you got the facts. You don't have to believe in nothing when you got the truth. You don't need to believe when you know. And that's what we seek here. We seek to know. The thing about the truth is the truth hurts. Like I just said, it would hurt me if I went to this woman and she said, could you just get out my face? I don't want nothing to do with you. That would hurt. See, that's reality. The truth hurts. It's supposed, if truth, if you claim to have truth and it does not hurt, at any point in your life, you don't have truth. Truth not supposed to make you happy. Because for generations, for centuries, we have lived in darkness. We have lived in lies and deceptions and half-truths and fantasy and fiction. So when you're used to that and somebody bring you light, bring you the truth, and you thought what you had was true, real, that's a hurtful thing. It's a hurtful thing. There's a lot of people who don't want to hear that their husband or their wife is cheating on them. They in denial. My husband wouldn't do that. My wife wouldn't do that. Their best friend who actually saw the husband and the wife cheating is scared to tell their friend, your husband, your boyfriend, your wife is cheating because people don't want and can't deal with reality. They can't deal with the truth. So instead of investigating, I just hate my friend. Why you bring that to me? I don't want, I don't want to know because truth hurts. There are people who know that religion and spirituality is bogus. They, they know, they know. But it's a hurtful thing because some of us, we believe in Elijah Muhammad all our life. We believe in Jesus all our life. We believe in Buddha or whatever all our life. Here comes somebody tell me this ain't real. My grandmama believed in Jesus. My great great grandfather believed in Jesus. The ancestors of believe in God, they was wrong. It's all fantasy, it's all fairy tales, it's all fiction. Get out of my face. I don't want to hear that. Truth hurts. They know deep down inside that what you're saying is right. They know. It just, it, it hurts. You think I did not hurt? I did not feel pain? When I began to realize that the teachings of Elijah Muhammad was bogus, and I loved this ever since I was a little boy, 
wow, this, I've been doing this and it's wrong. It's, it's, this is not to say that these things don't contain or have good benefits. This is not what we're saying. I'm not saying that. What we're saying is that that belief system, although it does contain some benefit, it is not real. The claims that it's telling you will never be fulfilled. Fraud is when you take money for something that is bogus. You commit fraud. These religions tell you that you're going to go to heaven if you're good and God going to do this for you, blah, blah, blah. That's fraud. It has never, none of these things have come true. Nobody from the dead has come back to say, oh, I went to heaven. It's all groovy. Elvis Presley was in heaven singing, you ain't singing, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog singing in heaven. Never happened. Nobody have went to the hereafter and came back and said, yeah, I, I died as a martyr in Islam. I got 40, 40 virgins in the hereafter. Making false promises. That's deception. That's, that's fraud. And some of us actually been waiting 2,000 years, 1,400 years, 2,000 years, 400 years. Waiting on the, this, these gods, the promises, the prophet, the prophecy to come true from the various numerous religious belief systems. Every time something happened in the world, God doing that. The war in Ukraine, God is doing that. If there's a tornado, God is doing a tornado. Earthquake, God. And then as soon as things go right back to the way they was, everybody shut up. I thought God was going to, what was the purpose of the, the earthquake or, or, or the hurricane or the war in Ukraine? Now everything is back to normal. Now you're going back to being stupid and idiots like you was. What was the purpose of it? It's all a lie. The difference between Many people and myself, I'm a truth seeker. I'm not loyal to an ideology or belief. I'm loyal to the truth. It don't make sense. It defies logic. Something is wrong. And even though I love the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, I love the nation of Islam. I got to let it go. It has some truth, some benefit, but it's fantasy and fiction. The Flintstones, Batman and Robin, Spider-Man, the Avengers Endgame. That's what it is. We need to wake up and smell the coffee. We need to wake up. Truth hurts. And if you tell the truth, and if you're keeping it real, you have those who want to hurt you. Because you are a messenger of the truth. And they don't, I don't see it. I don't hear it. You become their enemy because the reality is they are keepers of lies and deceit. They're not interested in the truth. They talk it, they're not really interested. They're interested in being a slave and pushing a slave narrative 
you got to serve somebody, worship somebody, kiss somebody's feet. You got to talk about Jesus every day. You got to talk about the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, every day. That's madness. That's insanity. You don't even, some of you who, some of you are married, you don't even talk about your wife or your husband like that every day. And you live with them, got, have children together. You got to talk about Minister Farrakhan every day. You put his picture on the wall. You got to read books with his face in it. Insanity. That's where the word fanatic come from. I'm a fan of Michael Jackson. I just don't admire Michael Jackson. I have become fanatical. Insane. I got to listen to Michael Jackson records 24 hours a day. His pictures on the wall. I got to dance around like Michael Jackson every day. Fanatic. That's a form of insanity. Being fanatical. And when you relate that to religion, it's called radical, radical Islam. They got to go out a little. They got, they just can't worship. They push it to a higher, to, to, to other levels. Radical Islam, radical Christianity, zealots. I was like you at one time. I was pro-black at one time. I was a black Muslim. I embraced Pan-Africanism. I understood the Hebrew Israelites. Used to talk with those brothers and on the street and be with them all the time. These people talk to me like Angel Snuffin' Up Seven is duh. You don't know. You don't know this. The the this do you 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 don't know nothing about Michael Garvey. <laughs> duh, duh. You don't know nothing about Noble Joy Lee. The the the. I've been around this stuff for forty five years. The difference between you and me is that I look at the forty five years, and it has produced nothing. except debates, fussing and fighting, arguing over research and information. I don't, I don't wish to degrade nobody. I don't wish to put nobody down. I'm watching our brother, Ben X, and they have a farm and doing a little something. You're doing nothing. This is 2022. You're doing nothing no better than our ancestors who was fresh from the slave plantation, who was ignorant and illiterate. They had farms. They built schools. What are you doing different? It's about evolution. It's about progress. You're going backwards. You can't do nothing better than the slaves did. What does that tell you? But you want to get angry at Angel Snub Nub 7 because I'm talking about it, but you see it. It's right there in your face, live and in living color. That's not my fault. You don't like Angel Snub Nub 7 because Angel Snubbed Up 7 talking about it make you feel like the loser you and I should feel like. We should feel like losers. So you know that you are a loser. That's why you keep talking about Kemet. The great civilizations of Africa. You keep talking about the past that you didn't have nothing to do with. What did you do in Kemet? What did your grandfather do in Kemet? 
which what, what is your contribution to the great african civilization what's your contribution what did you do absolutely nothing so you have to take those things to make yourself feel better because you have accomplished nothing worth talking about on your own. Even in modern times, they talk about, look what Marcus Garvey did. Look what Nation of Islam did, the Black Panthers, the Moorish Science Temple. They keep talking about the past that you didn't have nothing to do with. That was 1930, 1940, 1920. What's your contribution? What have you accomplished? Absolutely nothing. And so you get angry at Angel Snub Nub 7 because when I talk, I make you feel like a loser. That's what we are. We have accomplished nothing since the civil rights movement 45, 50 years ago. Have accomplished nothing of significance. The only thing they do every day, I'm gonna open up a business. I'm gonna grow my own food. Slaves did that. Slaves opened up their own business. Slaves was growing their own food. What are you doing different? Nothing. The teachings, the beliefs supposed to evolve, progress, move forward. And these people, are going backwards and want us to go backwards with them. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Absolutely, Deacon. I can accept the reality. One of my favorite sports is basketball. I win some games and I lose some games. I'm a good loser because I know I tried my best. And I will go to the other side, shake them brothers' hand, and say, hey, man, y'all played a good game. Then there are those who are bad losers, only lost by one point. Y'all ain't all that. You still lost. Nobody cares about number two. The Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan won about six championships. Who was the number two? Nobody, a lot of folks can't even remember out of all the six championships, who was the number two? Who, who came number two? Who was they playing? Most people couldn't tell you who they was playing and don't care. That's number two. Don't care about number two. So here we are, reality is still on earth. I want to motivate and inspire us to be number one. You don't want that. You are so a sore loser and you want to pretend like you got something going on. And everybody ignore you because you're not number one. You're not a king. You're not a god. You're not a queen. It's just talk. When Muhammad Ali was doing all that talking, he backed his talking up. That's why people came to see Muhammad Ali. They wanted to see him lose because he did all that talking. And he backed it up with his fist. You do all this talking and you're a loser. You want to be around people that kiss your little knee and give you credit that you don't deserve. Oh, you opened up a business. Oh, you growing your own food. Oh, you starting a little cult, a cult camp somewhere in rural Mississippi. And yeah, all that little tiddly, tiddly, diddly, diddly, diddly do stuff. 
You want credit for doing something a slave can do. So what? But you're supposed to be better than a slave. You have the knowledge of self and you got the education and the research and the information and you can you cannot progress no more than a slave. I already said the beginning of 2022. These people are going to keep doing the same stuff they've been doing for the last 10 years, which is nothing. It's thousands of them, hundreds of them. And they can't even open up a lemonade stand successfully. Go look at their videos. Gossip and slander and hate going back and forth. Where's your program? Just talking about people. I don't like that Negro. I don't like her. I don't like him. That's all these videos is about. It's not even worth me watching the video. That's all it's about. Hollering, screaming, and cussing. What? But they about the information. And if you really do bring the information, your people don't even want to listen to you. Sonetta versus Tahaka Bay. Thousands of views. Thousands of views. But let Sonetta let Tahaka Bay get positive and just stick with the information. Watch the views start going down. I'm talking about real information. I'm not talking about no intellectual fighting. The Hebrew Israelites versus the comedic people. I'm talking about some real information. Make you think for real. The views start going down and down because we are garbage feeders. We love to play in the trash. They're not going to come and support and listen to Angel Snub No. 7 because I'm too real. We bring, it, we bring in the hard truth and truth hurts. That's just the bottom line. And that's good. Keep your fake ass away from here. We only want the real. We get 10 subscribers, get 10 likes, they real. Not here to entertain you. You have plenty of entertainment, but woo, your entertainment days might be over. I'm not a prophet, but your entertainment days might be over. Mm, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So the truth hurts. Instead of getting angry at Angel Snub Nub 7 and upset with Angel Snub Nub 7, instead of getting upset with the truth because it hurt, why don't you just man up? Woman up. Stop being so childish. It is what it is. You can deny. You can deflect. You cannot escape reality. You can talk all the stuff you want to. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna never die. I'm gonna turn into a ball of gas. Well, one thing for sure, you're gonna die. That's the reality of it. You gotta deal with it. It makes no difference how you hate Angel Snub Number no. Seven. We bring valid critique. Valid questions and inquiry. Getting angry and upset, it's not going to change nothing. Because if it's not me, it's going to be somebody. It's time for the truth. It's time for reality to make its claim in the world. Living as fantasy and fiction for generations, for centuries all this invisible garbage and you wonder why humanity is in the condition that is in 
Because you, because technically you don't even live here. You live in a book. You don't even live in reality. You live in a, in a book. And some of them even say it. I live in the Bible. I live in the Quran or, or whatever. Human beings supposed to be the most intellectual life form on this planet. I can't tell. I can't tell. Man up and accept the reality of things. In the Quran, why do you why you reference the Quran? You say you don't like it. I didn't say I didn't like it. I just told you there's some benefits. You have to be able to discern what is good and what is a bunch of crap. There's lessons to be learned that make sense. It says in the Quran that before Allah destroys a people, he gives them a warning. And in nature, as some of you have experienced, there's the calm before the storm. I remember when I was a child, we got caught up in a tornado. It was a beautiful day. All of a sudden, the birds disappeared. The birds stopped singing. You stopped seeing the little animals moving around like, what's up? What's up? Most times, nature would give you a warning. Like earthquakes. A lot of times, the earthquake starts off with little tremors. Just start shaking the ground a little bit. And it gets harder and harder. Earthquake getting ready to happen. The big one. We was outside playing. And my mother knew what the deal was. It got real quiet. All of a sudden, the clouds start turning black. And the wind started blowing. My mother grabbed us little children. Took us in the house. Start praying to Jesus. <laughs> You do not want to be in a tornado. You do not want to be in a tornado. It's, I was so young, I really didn't understand that we could have been killed. I didn't understand. I was too young to understand what really what was going on. A lot of times we are warned. Some of us marry people and we date people. They give you a sign early. That they ain't about nothing. They ain't no good for you. We we I'm guilty. I'm 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 guilty too. We just ignore. We ju we just ignore the signs. She can't be all that. And, and you justify you justify ignoring the sign. I ain't gonna listen to Angel Snuffin Up Seven. <laughs> I'm not gonna listen to Angel Snuffin Up Seven because he crazy. You just want to ignore the signs. Yeah, I knew. I saw the signs. I saw the signs. A lot of times we see the signs, we just ignore the signs. Because we think that we can make somebody better or something that we can do, it's not going to turn out bad for us. We see the signs, but we ignore it. She can't be that bad. Look how big her booty is. Damn. Who she got a big booty. Oh, that fat muck. What the rock? Woo. I just bang, bang. She can't be that bad. Then you wake up. She done went in your bank account. Took all your money out your bank account and, and took off. We ignore the signs. <clears throat> At 
As many of you know, I got caught up in the justice, the legal justice system or whatever you want to call it. It's not a lot of justice in the system. <laughs> I got caught up in the justice system. Don't cry. Don't cry for me. No pity for me because I knew. I knew. I got caught up. Even my family members came to me. You need to let that go. But I thought I could do something that could change or whatever. And I got caught up. I was warned. So whenever you get caught up, and when you ignore the warning, you tell a child, give them a warning. Hey, don't play over there. That ball might go out in the street to get hit by a car. Oh, shut up, old, old man. You know what you're talking about. I got this. So the child get involved in playing the, in the game. The ball goes out in the street. Child chases the ball, gets hit by a car. Are we supposed to cry? A child don't know any better, you say. When I was a child, I knew better. Now, you do have some real stupid ass folks. When I was a child and the ball went on the street, I didn't run chasing the ball because I know cars going back and forth. You do have stupid ass children. But when you warn, somebody tell you, don't do this, don't do that. And you just ignore because they stupid. They crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. Are we supposed to cry for you? Oh, little Jimmy. He was a good little boy. He got hit by that car. Oh, little Jimmy. Little Jimmy was a fool. That old man. Yeah, the, the old man was drunk. The old man told him, watch yourself, son. Little Jimmy told the old man, go to hell. Now little Jimmy on a, on, a, on a stretcher in the ambulance fighting for his damn life, chasing the ball. All of it could have been avoided if he listened to the old man. And that's how we act. That's, that's how we are. Can't tell me nothing. Mellow Cap can't tell me nothing. I'm too smart. Deacon's a reality. Angela Hines... Uh, Sister Ann, y'all can't tell me I'm, I'm, I'm smarter than all of y'all. You can't tell me nothing. Even last year when we went through all that, most of you, a lot of you wrote me and told me the deal. Didn't have to go through that. But see, this is the thing. That's our choice. What they say in religion, God gives us free will that's what it says in religious teachings right you also have to suffer the consequences of your actions because you decided to do something different you didn't want to heed the warning so yeah you do do it do your thizzy we all make our choices. So I made my choice. I made my choice. And it cost me 10 years of my life. And actually, it could have cost me my life. Actually. Because now we know that that man was a killer. He had a gun. He could have shot and killed me back then. Also, the police pulled guns on me. Two times. Messing around in the same incident. I could have been a dead man. And sometimes when we make wrong choices, we don't get a second chance. A lot of times we make the wrong choice and it costs us our life. And contrary to popular belief, 
We only have one life. So it did not cost me my life. It caused me to grow up. It caused me, that experience was traumatic to me. And sometimes that's what it's going to take for to make us wake up. Something traumatic. Because we so, our head is, we, we got hard head. Know it all. It can't tell me nothing. There's a lot of people in prison right now. Can't tell me nothing. Hard head. There's a lot of people in the cemetery. Premature death. Hard head. Can't tell me nothing. You was warned and decided, I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, you do what you want to do. Well, I did what I want to do. And it cost me 10 years of my life. Because I, I, this is what I want to do. And the police was happy to oblige. I'm glad you want to do this. Your name is not Lauren Ray no more. Your, your name is 114-345-678. That's your new name. I'm ha we're, we're happy to oblige, sir. So because of me, because of me, I lost 10 years of my life. Yes, there was others involved. Yes, there was. I made the choice though. Yeah, the police is crooked and that Negro was crooked. I made the choice because I was warned and I'm going to do what I'm going to, I want to do. You, you see what it got me, right? Now, the thing about these things, if you survive, did you learn something from it? You have people that go through crap and they ain't learn a damn thing. And next thing you know, they're dead. You should be able to learn from these experiences. So now I can, from my experience, I can come here on YouTube. I can come here on Facebook or wherever. I want to try to help you avoid the potholes that I fell in because of my immaturity, because of my arrogance. Help you so you don't have to fall in the same hole. You can go on and do better things. Sometimes we have to suffer trauma in order to learn something. What they say in the black conscious community, When an interracial couple have problems or somebody they call a coon and Uncle Tom, they 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 have problems in in, in, in society, or whatever. See that nigga getting his wake up call. This is a wake up call. And this nigga getting his wake up call. Well, I don't know. in our lifetime or it's getting ready to happen right now. We all getting the ultimate 
wake up call. Now or later. And we talked about this in past live streams that something can happen in the world that can change your life, our lives, the way we live forever. War is one thing that can happen. Disease. I just heard on the news today that there's a new variant of COVID. It never stops. What is this? The this is the fourth, the fourth uh, variant of, of COVID. <laughs> COVID said, I'm not done with you. I'm planning on killing all you, you folks off the earth. <laughs> COVID ain't went nowhere. They acted like COVID disappeared or something. It's still creeping around, ducking and dodging. China. China has a COVID outbreak right now, a, a new strain. And of course, it's going to travel too. <laughs> so war and disease, there could be a worldwide drought. If there's a drought, you can't grow food. You need water to grow food, y'all. If there's a worldwide drought, you can't get food from other places. Everybody is suffering. So whatever is available, people are going to fight and die over those resources. That's That changed the whole, your goal, some of y'all, uh, let's get cryptocurrency. Let's get gold and silver. You can't eat that. What is gold and silver going to do for you in a drought? And there's famine. Now, you're going to have some greedy folks that will take the gold, hoping that some miracle uh, will happen, and they can spend that gold and that silver. You can't eat gold and silver. You can't eat, you can't drink cryptocurrency. Do you know a lot of civilizations, those people who do their research and get the information, a lot of these great civilizations have fall, not because of war, because of hunger, drought, famine, disease. Now, right now, we're looking at disease and we're looking at a war. Let's talk about this. We're going to get out of here. The topic that we chosen was Black people need World War III to happen. That's the topic. I'm going to tell you why. So earlier, was it yesterday or I think it was yesterday, the president of Ukraine by satellite talked to the Congress. <laughs> My people and the bombs, the bombs are dropping on Kevin and all over them. We need a no-flight zone and, and help us and fight the, 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 the Russians and bleeders. And, Think about, think about 9-11. Think about Afghanistan. <laughs> he's trying to, he's trying to sell himself. You gotta. This is the this is the reality of it. And most of us, you don't have to be a historian or or nothing. This is this is the bottom line. Okay. Now when you look. When you're throwing bombs back and forth, dropping bombs or whatever, there's a possibility though that bomb might not stay where you want it to go. 
So here you are fighting on the border. Russia is fighting in Ukraine on the border of Poland, which is a NATO country, right? One of those bombs go across the border and kill some folks. Poland is a is a NATO country, right? It's just like if you're in a gang. You kill somebody's gang member, he part of that gang, you got to expect that gang to come after after you. Poland is part of a gang. It's called NATO. This we're living here in a dangerous time here. And everybody going to get a wake up call. And I still hear these Negroes talking about that's the white people stuff. Let them fight, whatever. They don't have nothing to do with us. That's the most stupid thing I ever heard in my life. How can you? OK, you are, are you paying higher gas prices, food prices? Are you suffering from inflation? The, the whole like the whole country, but it don't have nothing to do for you. Do it's, it, it's not going to affect you at all. Also, to my knowledge, and anybody in the chat room, you can correct me, to my knowledge, China and Russia are working together to override those sanctions. They're going to develop their own monetary system. They don't have to worry about and care about America's funky sanctions. And China is going to give Russia the materials that it needs for the war. Now, you see what's going on here. China is a, is a superpower. Russia is a superpower. Nuclear power. This little conflict, like we talked about it before, this little conflict with Ukraine, and I think I even heard Biden say it, it can kick off it can kick off World War III. And of course, it will start off conventional warfare, like what's going on in Ukraine right now. But when it's all said and done, nobody wants to be a loser like the American Negro. <laughs> nobody wants to be a loser. Biden or somebody shoot off the first nuclear bomb it's on and popping. This is not fear teachings. This is just the reality that we face. This is our wake up call. Now, for me, this is my belief. I'm saying belief because you know we deal with knowledge here, but this is my belief. The Quran says, Do you think that you would believe? or say that you believe and not be tried. This situation, we're gonna see once and for all what your religion, your ideology, all the bullshit that people got out here, we wanna see it for what it is. We wanna see how your God protect you from radiation fallout. We want to see you, what you going to do if Russia and China win and, and come over here and invade the United States? Y'all with the big mouth and your Frederick Douglass Academy and your farms and all your bull crap. You don't have nothing. You have nothing, a leg to stand on. You did not prepare for anything. And you think the white man don't give a damn about you. Those Russians and the Chinese come over here and they won. Damn shit don't give a damn about you. But you, we was warned. We brought the Mississippi campaign to try to put us in a position where we can have some kind of power. So, I mean, we, we don't have nuclear weapons, but it, at least we can get a 22 in our hand and then pop off of, of six shots or do something. We are totally 1,000% helpless because of comedic teachings 
because of Hebrew Israelite bullshit, because of the Nation of Islam, because of the Moor Science Temple, because of the Christian Church, we are vulnerable to to everything and anybody. Let's see what your big mouth will do when you have to learn how to speak Russian and Chinese. Where your God at? When they throwing your ass in a concentration camp. Oh Allah, oh Jesus, throwing your ass in a in concentration camp. Giving you bread and water. All the little stuff that you got, they just take it. They just take it away from you. All the buildings that you're trying to build and your little businesses. The winner of a foreign power come in and take all that away from you. And then, of course, before it even gets to that point, they, they are going to reinstate the draft. And all y'all young pro-black Negroes or whatever talking that crap. Either you go to prison or you go to war. That's your only two choices. Your pro-black ass is going to the war or you go to prison. Or it could be to the point where if you refuse, I just blow your brains out. Pop, pop, pop. The wake up, the, the ultimate wake up call. I want to see Jesus in action. I want to see Allah in action. I want to see these gods and the, the spiritual realm and all this stuff. When nuclear bombs is going off and radiation is everywhere, the food that you grow, you can't eat it after radiation has fell on it. I want to see your God and your spooks and your spirits and all. I want to see it save you. I want to see how big and bad you talk. White man is a devil and a damn cracker and blah, blah, blah. And the Chinese is this, that. Tell it to them in their face when they get here for your ass. It's all a joke. It's all funny. It's all a game. Let's see what your Pan-Africanism do. These people crap can't even help you in normal peacetime. What the hell is it going to do for you during wartime? Wartime is much different than during peace. Ask anybody who lived through World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War how how life is. See, America itself has never suffered. America going around the earth, bombing people and laughing. <laughs> North Korea, they're testing a rocket that can come to America. America is going to get hurt this time. This is not Afghanistan. This is not Iraq. This is the big, the big league. This is the big boy time. This is your wake up call. All of you that laughed at Operation Exodus Mississippi, laugh at Angel Snub Nub Seven, laugh at Brother Talib, laugh at us here on this platform before you close your funky ass eyes and die. You're going to remember, damn. And your Africa is not going to be able to save you because your Africa going to be in trouble too. You can't make nobody see your vision and see what you see because their mind is rigid. Michael Jackson wrote on his wall in his room, I'm going to sell 22 million records. And his brother Jackie saw the writing on the wall 
And he told Michael, are you serious, man? 22 million records? The best you can do, you might be able to do 7 million. You, you're talking crazy now. No, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to I'm going to do 22 records. I, that's what I'm going to do, Jackie. I, I can It's crazy. How many records did Michael sell a thriller? Double 22. Over 40 million records and Thriller is still selling to this day. And what did Jackie say? Wow. I, I That's what these comedics, the aboriginals, and all these Negroes out here talking about Christians and Muslim, that's what they're going to say. When they bring up, didn't Angel Snub Nub 7, that little crazy guy, didn't he warn us about all this years ago? Where's your Allah at? Your Jesus. Your spiritual realm, your spiritual ass going to be spiritual decomposing on the ground with radiation glowing in your ass. That's what's going to be happening to you. The ultimate wake up call. Maybe that's the reason why I'm still alive, because I actually would like to see it. I'm going to suffer with y'all. <laughs> Maybe. I was spared death so I could actually see because you see all this right now. You see it lining up, the big possibility. The next conflict won't be no joke. And your black leadership has done nothing to prepare us for the change. So don't be shocked that you and me and your grand your grandchildren that you love, you're going to be on slave plantation again. Because if there's nuclear war, everything is destroyed. There's no electricity. There's no gas refined. It's all everything is all messed up and destroyed. That means whoever is living, whoever is able to come back into power. Got to do things the old-fashioned way again. So we need a, a cheap labor force. It's not going to be our people. What about them Negroes? They were slaves at one time anyway. There your people go right back picking cotton. Thank you, comedic community. Thank you, black Muslims. Thank you, Moorish Science Temple. Thank you, Hebrew Israel. Thank y'all. For the fantasy, the feel-good fairy tales, that's going to be good for us back in the cotton field. That's the reality of it. I did receive a message from our sister Mellow Cap, and she wanted me to talk about Brianna. What's her name? Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor's mother is uh, what's the word she would like for the department of justice to get involved because as you know there was no convictions of any police officer involved in her murder that's what that's what it really was it's, it's, it's a, she was murdered she's in her house and these bastards broke in and killed her in your house but again, it goes back to what we was talking about. We don't control nothing. We have no influence. If the state of Kentucky has washed itself of Breonna Taylor, I very much doubt the Department of Justice is going to get involved in that. I very much doubt. But if Brianna Taylor's mother 
if she had some kind of power behind her, like we control the state of Mississippi, and you got that kind of influence with the federal government, now you, you got a shot. But she has no power. She has no, we have no power, we have no influence. We gotta sit around and beg and hope. Please, Mr. White Man, please treat us, treat us fairly. And if you make enough enough noise, like in the case of George Floyd, they'll give you a little crumb. What about all the brothers and sisters that's innocent sitting in prisons and jails right now? What about all the brothers and sisters that didn't get justice before George Floyd? The list is so long, I, I, I would have to probably spend an hour or so just going through the list. And these pro-black, black first, comedic, whatever the hell they want to call it, Aboriginal, Aboriginal is part of the clique now. These clowns. Don't want to do nothing to put yourself in a position so that you can have power influence. The Mississippi campaign is about a safe haven for us. When the slaves left the slave plantation, what was they looking for? A safe haven, a place where they could feel safe. We have nowhere to go. So since we have nowhere to go, that means we have to create our own safe haven. Africa not going to save your happy ass. The only one who's going to save your, your, your us in this country is us. We have the resources. We have the education. We have everything that we need. This this blackity black mindset is detrimental. They live in a delusional world. And actually, they have the same kind of mindset as the racist, as the oppressor. They are the offspring of the oppressor. You can hear them talk about black people. They sound worse. Then the, then the Ku Klux Klan. Have you ever heard them talk about me? They talk about me with hatred. You, the hate is in their eyes. We the angels not know you. This is our reason. <laughs> they hate my guts. Like, damn, is it that serious? I didn't put you in chains. I didn't put you in prison. I didn't kick your dog down the street. They hate your guts because they want all of us to be a loser like they are. So this is the wake up call. I don't want us to be afraid because there's nothing we can do about it. What's this of being scared and afraid? There's nothing that we can do about it. But you do know If this turn into a nuclear war, all this stuff that they talking, spiritual and comedic and pan-African, all that's going to be out the door because none of that's going to mean a damn thing when radiation start coming out the sky. Brother Talib said Africa scared to speak out against Ukraine over their own people treatment in the Ukraine. Duh. Because they know what's going to happen. I haven't heard nothing and seen no Africans, even from the nations that those students, those, those Africans, those black people are from. I haven't seen nowhere where I don't keep it with a whole lot of news. I haven't seen none of those countries speaking up for the mistreatment of their people in the Ukraine. Wow. Well, this is the this is the wake up call. You heard it first. And really, you're not hearing it from me. 
It's common sense. Because like I told you, deep down inside, the majority of these people know they wrong. When that radiation start falling in this country, see, you could talk, you could talk all that smack all you want to when you don't have to, to deal with nothing. So you can run your mouth and talk. <laughs> to live ain't gonna do a damn thing to me. <laughs> to live. Then when to live show up at your door and knock on the door, what's up? What's up? How you find out where I live? I'm gonna call the police. See, it's a different story. It's a different story when you got to deal with something. Anybody can run. You can run your mouth and say anything that you want to. It's a whole different ball game when nuclear radiation, since y'all do the research and get the information, why don't you get the information? Why don't you read about what happened to those people in Japan when this country dropped those three bombs on those Japanese cities? Why don't you research that? Why don't you research what happens to you after nuclear fallout? Where you gonna go? Where you gonna have, what, what, what's the plan, committed community? What's the plan, Black First? What's the plan, Nation of Islam? What's your plan? Just wait, wait on God. I'm waiting on the, on the Black Messiah. Don't come save us. You're going to die in nuclear radiation and your ragged ass children are going to end up on the slave plantation. That's your future. Prophet snup nut. <laughs> That's your future. Right back where it all started from. Matter of fact, that's probably the best place for your ass to be. Forever slave. You act like a slave. You think like a slave. You can talk all that black power stuff all you want to. The only thing I see in here is a bunch of slaves. No creativity. Rigid in your mind. Delusional. Put your back picking cotton. And it can't happen. It's not, it's not a fantasy. It's not a pipe dream. You can have nuclear war. And the survivors, China and Russia might be strong enough to take all this stuff over. Your children gonna have to learn Chinese and Russian. And might have to get back. Be back on, because like I told you, ain't no electricity. You done blew everything up. Everything is all torn up. Who going to build all this stuff again? Who going to do? How about them people? They used to it anyway. Mexicans say, I'm going back to Mexico. <laughs> that stuff all took America tore up anyway. I'm going back to the border. All these suckers that came to America going to be heading back to the border. They're going to be getting in ships and stuff going back where the hell they came from. <laughs> Woo! I can see it. I can see it. it, it it's sad when you don't have any power. How many, I'm going to say this and we're going to get out of here. How many of you ever got robbed before? I know I have. Somebody pull a gun on you, want your money, and you, you don't have a gun, you don't have nothing to fight with. Raise your hand, anybody that been robbed by gunpoint. I have. I've been two times. I was robbed by gunpoint two times. That's a horrible feeling. Give me your money. Now, I know a little martial arts or whatever. You can't beat a bullet. The, the guy, the people too far away for you to try to, there's nothing too much that you can do. You can't, you can't beat a bullet. So this guy got a gun or a woman because some of the, some of y'all chicks is tough too women can rob too your money or your life <laughs> that's the most i can't describe how helpless 
Because you know you don't want to get his present your money. You know you don't want to get his present your car. But what can you do? You know if you try something, it could cost you your life. And we know we only have one life. Even those people talking about, oh, you're going to turn into a ball of gas. I'm going to go to the spiritual realm, whatever. Your ass is not going to risk getting shot fighting over a car or those two or three dollars you got in your wallet. You're not going to do it. And you know that you're going to the spiritual realm. See, it's a bunch of nonsense because they know they're not going nowhere. You only have one life and it's natural for us to try to protect that life to the best of our ability. But see, listening for the last 40 some years to all this pro blackity black stuff, we in a position, we, we totally helpless. Well, first of all, as you know, the, the, the people here are kicking our ass. So you know what's going to happen when somebody else come over here. We're done. So I want to thank, I want to thank the Nation of Islam, the Moorish Science Temple, the Hebrew Israelites, uh, the NAACP, the Christian Church, and all this black, and all these our organizations and all this stupid nonsense. Thank you for keeping up, putting us in a position where we're vulnerable and somebody can rape us anytime they feel like it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to thank you for that. And now we are living right now where it seems as like the shizit is about to hit the fan, the ultimate wake up call. You can't blame me because I wanted to try to put us in a better position where we can have some kind of power a little 22 or something. Can't get a bazooka, but damn, at least we can shoot off six shots. Listen to these people. We ain't got to, we don't have a chance in hell to do anything. So thank them for whatever happened to us. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Congressional Black Congress. Thank you, uh, 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 the, the Black Christian African Episcopalian Church or whatever. Thank, the Black First. Thank y'all for doing not doing a damn thing for us. Thank you. Let me deal with some of these comments. We're going to get out of here. Brother Talib said, folks, as the world turns, it may already be over for so black people now. And Russians and Chinese have no respect for blacks in this country. Look at how they treat Africans in Europe and China. There you go. You're going to be wishing for the white man. If these people broke out and come over here, you're going to be wishing for the white man. You hate the white man, so you're going to be wishing for them because these people damn sure don't give a damn about you for real. There's no law to protect you. When another country invade and win, there's no, all the laws that protect you don't mean nothing. No more laws to protect you. Let's see how you like it. Let's see you talk all that black... They're not going to let you talk all that blackity black stuff under Russian and Chinese rule. All that, all that Hebrew running around here acting and looking crazy. All oh, that's over. It's over. I want to see it over. Damn fool. I said, I told them. Don't listen to Angel Snub Number Seven. He, he crazy. <laughs> we're going to find out and if it's not in our lifetime it's going to happen due to war disease drought, famine it's going to happen if it don't happen now it's going to happen prophet angel snub number seven I guarantee So with that said, if there's any more, if there's questions or comments before we get out of here. I always wake myself up on the live stream. I don't really be feeling like it, but <laughs> I always get woke up. 
I had to get up in the morning, stay on my exercise program. I'm loving it. I would suggest to anybody, get you some exercise in. Diet means a lot. Eating healthy means a lot. But you got to put in that exercise. Stretch those muscles. Get your, get, your, get your breathing together. Expand those lungs. Get that air in your lungs. Move those bones, especially when you get older. Move those bones. Use those weights and pull those muscles you normally don't use. You know, don't let yourself get all stiffed up. Might as well get in shape, y'all, because we might have to do a lot of running. Ah, I can't go over there. Ah, got to go over there. Oh, the Chinese over there. Oh, the Russians over here. Ah, ah. Going to do a lot of running and hiding. <laughs> Woo. Okay, so on that note, I want to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Evening, brother. Thank you so much. And we might be back this weekend and talk with us a little bit. I want to thank uh, Mella Cap and your Brother Talib, the Deacons, Twin Pyramid, and Soul Brother 85, and those who are watching, uh, all who are in the, in the chat room. I don't, did I miss anybody? I didn't see a whole lot of folks in the chat room. But of course, shout out to all our regulars. Thank you for listening. Uh, to those who will be listening to this broadcast later on. And I know Sister Ann always get on my case about it. So let me let me pull this up here real quick. Because <clears throat> Sister Ann always get on my case. Remind people of the book, the autobiography. If you want to donate to Angel Snub Number 7, you can go to the description box, cash out, dollar sign, Angel Snub Number 7. And if you're interested in why Angel Snub Number 7 is who he is, you can check out the autobiography of Angel Snub Number 7 on Amazon. $9.99 for the ebook, $49.99 for the paperback. And the reason why it's so high is because I didn't want my enemies to be able to uh, read the autobiography because they like to try to find stuff to try to use it to, to uh, slander you and whatever. So I'm not going to give it to you for free. I'm going to make you pay for it. So you can go to Amazon for the ebook, $9.99, and the uh, paperback, $49.99. I appreciate all those who have purchased my autobiography that I'm interested enough to learn my, you want to learn my background and what makes me who I am. Now, there are those who say, Angel Snub Nub 7 need help. Well, if Angel Snub Nub 7 needs help, and you really want to help me because I'm crazy, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, then you should purchase my autobiography so you can see what made me crazy, and then you can help me. You can't help me if you don't know nothing about me. What caused me to go crazy? You get the, you get the autobiography, I'm telling my life story, and you can see all the situations that caused me to be the crazy guy I am today. I'm crazy, and Brother Tahaka Bay is criminal. He's, he's a lifetime criminal, and I'm the crazy one. Shout out to uh, Tahaka Bay and the Moorish World TV Citizen. Shout out to that platform um, that has been good to us. I don't know about anybody else. The only thing I know that Brother Tahaka Bay has been good to the Rallies Temple. And I am going to be, I'm going to show love right back to our brother Tahaka Bay 
and the Morris World TV citizen. Years ago, Brother Talib said, years ago, I told some someone Americans will, will run to the Canadian border. I ain't calling myself a prophet, but stuff is looking real. Absolutely. He said that years, years ago, he told, he said that Americans will be run. There, there are, some of them have already done it. Matter of fact, we was talking, Brother Talib, and you were saying how Americans, not, not black, just black folks, white Americans been getting out of this country because they are looking at something really big might be going down. They don't want to be here. We was talking about that a few years ago. He was telling me about that. But then there are those, some of us, we can't go nowhere. You know, There are those in Ukraine. You think they want to actually be there and bombs dropping them? They, sometimes you, you're in a position you can't go. You just got to, whatever would be, would be. We can't go. Some people too sick to go anywhere. Too old. So, but yeah, that's, that's true. They getting out of here. And there are Caucasian people. They call themselves doomsday preppers. They're getting ready for this situation. They they dug their bunker. See, the black see the black and the black folks don't think this way. These white, there's a few brothers and sisters because I saw them on a video. They are thinking about a time when this country, when when nuclear radiation, radiation is all over the place. They built these bunkers and these places. They spent their they spent their life savings for this kind of situation. Now the problem is, if the United States lose, you can't stay in your bunker forever. And if Russia and China come in here, you still going to be messed up. So really, I mean, why do you want to live? You're going to have to you're going to have to learn how to speak Russian. You have to learn how to speak Chinese. You got to learn how to do things the way another another people won't done or they will kill you outright. That's how it is in war. I say this and, and get out of here because the Bible, I believe it's the Bible, correct me, and I'm paraphrasing, but the Bible said that there's a day that's going to come, you're going to wish for death, and death is not going to come because you got to suffer because you got to suffer. To die makes it easy for you to get out of your punishment. You got to suffer. And all these people that laughed at us, they're gonna live. They're gonna suffer. And they're gonna remember Angel Snup Nup Seven. They're gonna remember reality's temple on earth. Like, damn. You don't have to like my opinion but when we present something to give us power a sanctuary state a safe haven how the hell you gonna have a problem with that now look at you on the ground with a handkerchief around your eyes and a russian soldier putting a bullet in your brain We all have free will and you can do whatever the hell you want to. But whatever choice we make in life, there's consequences, bad and good. We are getting ready probably to experience the ultimate bad, the ultimate wake up call. So on that note, again, thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. 
and we'll catch you on the flip. And we'll catch you on the flip side. And uh, like I said, this weekend, we probably come back and talk with us this weekend. Share the video. Subscribe, like, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip. Like Don Cornelius used to always say, as important, I wish us love, peace, and so we are already 5,000.